Hello everyone, welcome back to Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. My name is Jensen013, and this is kind of a different approach than what I normally do. This is post-commentary right now, so without further ado, let us continue onwards with Sin's Fortress. Um, basically, <laughs> I think I was showing some things I was doing, because I think I did a few things off-screen, off but... Sans Fortress, I found out with Black Fountains, is kind of a very terrible place, honestly. As you'll see in a bit, but for now we're just kind of... We're just kind of luring a few snake men around, just... Kind of doing this normal... Just normal rank and file, but... As well as attempting to test to see if... How well I can actually parry, which... As you're seeing here, it doesn't go well, so I just kind of go for a backstab regardless and just... Move onwards. So I was like, okay, he's down, so let's go... Or the other idiots. I noticed I don't actually go for the trap because I I figured that since I'm using the black I'm using black, gray, the gray board mod, so there's probably something waiting for me. So I wanted to use that trap just in case, just as a caution. And we get a successful we get a successful parry from him, but you saw how much my health actually went down from failing the first one. But either way, I continue we continue moving onwards and. I think I start kind of being a bit more careful, at least until I realize there's Black Phantom Snake Man right there and proceed to panic, I think. I don't necessarily remember what my reaction was, but it was probably akin to panic. As I pretty much move directly straight for the trap, basically try to see what how much damage I could get away with killing one of them. And surprisingly, I got one of them with the first... I guess I got both of them with the first trap, which is interesting, and I saw... And you saw my health pretty much go down the drain, basically, with that single hit, and kind of scared me, honestly. Also, a strange thing I noticed with the Snake Men, especially with the Black Fan and varieties, that they don't seem to—they don't seem to adapt well to—they don't seem to adapt well to jump attacks. So I end, i believe I start end up just abusing this discovery I made, like ever since because it just ends up start you can just kind of stagger them forever with jump attacks basically it'll just knock them down they get up you jump attacking again they fall down and just rinse and repeat and then they die so i was like okay i can handle these it won't be any problems i'll just make my way through sense fortress i usually do just run through and i know it's up there you probably can't see him directly but there is a black phantom like snake woman on top of like the archway not on the bridge thankfully but on the archway and it's like sort of bad and then I see over there there's another snake man black phantom like hiding I was like how on earth am I doing this so I was like okay I'll so I figured I was just gonna run but unfortunately a snake woman kind of had different plans for me and then well this happened first death of the run yeah so I guess sometime back I make it over here and I noticed that one of the snake men here is actually gone. So I was like, well, what's going on? But I end up not questioning, I think, so I end up just like, okay, well, I'll just deal with him and continue onwards and hope to God this guy doesn't share up and... I find out how hard it is to actually carry one of them. It's kind of evil, honestly. And of course, here I am once more on the third attempt now, and I just end up thinking... Screw it! I'm just gonna run through Sin's Fortress! And the strange thing about that, it actually works somehow. Because Sin's Fortress is is an interesting area because it's sort of like a begin it's a beginner player's trap basically. The entire place is a trap regardless, but it's a trap towards beginning players. Cause you know Dark Souls has like the mindset of like you should progress slowly and just kinda take your time through everything. Sin's Fortress has a way of saying no to that. It kind of throws you in a loop and saying, Oh, by the way, we're going to position things where you can't actually move slowly. And the weird thing is, if you rush through Sin's Fortress, you usually can't actually make it through unharmed. And I decided to just go through this as well as collecting large Titanite shards so I can actually upgrade the lovely Parson Spear I have. And I think this is where I was like just checking to see which shards I had to see how Because I was trying to like calculate as I went to see how many shards I would need to get the Spirit of Plus 10 actually because That way I was hoping when I made it to New Londo and grabbed the there when we eventually grabbed the very large ember I can upgrade that straight to plus 15 hopefully with the amount of chunks I could get by then 
and of course me just kind of playing around the boulder traps, which is always the best part. Boulder traps are fun. Especially because it's always humor seeing the snake man come towards you and be like, oh, by the way, boulder. It's always so good. But yeah, this post commentary, it's going to be an experiment for me, at least. There's going to be one other video I think that will have that will have this being done on, and this will be the same, this will be in the same report session as this. So, let me guys, let me guys, let me know what you guys think of this, or should I just go, and I'll probably switch back to live commentary with the next, for the rest of this. Just because it's kind of simpler that way, but... As you see here, I'm just sort of, I'm just sort of like luring the snake man over because, you know, I don't know what I'm expecting. Then I have the sneaking suspicion there's probably a black phantom in there. So just in case, I want to be able to, I want to be able to use the trap to my advantage. And as you can see, there's a, there's, I'm using probably the only reason, the only way of defending unless I dodge, which is blocked with my sword, which unfortunately, it's not the best way of gathering stuff and as you see I'm starting hitting the walls just kind of seeing what I can find and unfortunately I think I will only just end up using Trapper Girl so I can just look in there and see and I figure there's probably nothing until I turn around and see the Black Phantom Snake Man over there to which I'm you know you're, you're probably freaking out when you're just turning around and there's suddenly just like oh by the way a scary like red shaded like dude and I think this is where I just started like Having having fun doing something. I think two like a backstab, jump jump attack, and a normal attack with two hands will be enough to kill them. And I swear, I think I'm like being extra careful with boulders in this round because I've I've had moments in which that boulder has actually killed me just by it crashing on. Because if you so much as rush into it after it has stopped, you will still take damage and get thrown off. So I decide. Okay, I'll just take the shortcut that I usually do for the Black Mage set and just, you know, I'll, I can skip whatever it is. And, of course, to my surprise, there's a Black Phantom right here. To which I'm, I'm kind of praising the developers for thinking of this because that's sort of a clever place to put an enemy because you're not expecting to go there. And just like, oh, by the way, you have to now deal with me. You pr and now that I think about it, you, I probably could have just run Pat. I could have just avoided her altogether by just running past her opening gate and just booking it. But I wanted to get her out of the way just in case. Because I didn't want to die and I didn't want to run through all this again. So, and also with this little part, this is pretty much one thing you can you can do this trap two different ways. The way I'm doing it right now where you just run past it, usually you can just avoid it. Or you can just kind of wait there where it goes and stuff. and. Here's a fun thing I noticed. There's a black phantom there, but also, the draw distance is an interesting way where if you're if you pass that doorway, he actually vanishes. But if you go back, he's still there. This is possibly the most dickish black phantom they position to me. To the point where it's like, I'm not gonna actually fight him on that bridge. No, I'm going to throw knives. I literally try to throw a few knives throw a few knives, just you know, let's get his attention, make him come to me, and maybe get hit by those pendulums. And I think I, yeah, I do, I do get hit, I do get hit by the pendulums, unfortunately, but it knocks me back quickly, and the idiot here gets off my sin, get off my fortress, and I just proceed to run over and just continue business as normal, and I think somewhere here, I don't remember if it's, I'm, yeah, I've had, like, a few recordings, I've had, like, some runs where I've tried fighting him, and then, like, my game, like, minimizes or some weird thing happens so I lose control and on him particularly but thankfully I think some things have saved me for some reasons but that's neither here nor there either way we'll just continue we continue onwards we're pretty much alone stretch at the final part of the worst the worst parts of Sen's Fortress in my opinion so I just make my way just kind of run through just like yeah we're done I'm I'm out of here so I'm just gonna make my way to the bonfire so and my only thought was to make it to the bonfire. Is like I don't want to deal with run up all the all this way again to get killed by something. So just kind of make my way. Still being cautious because there's still like the giant that's throwing. And I think somewhere along the lines I find that there is actually a black phantom on the bridge there. Um, just keep her in mind for later because I 
there's kind of something funny, and I just kind of skip. I do skip through what I did in the bonfire because I think all I did was move a lot of myself around and kind of just up upgrade a few things and like manage my inventory, which I didn't want people to see because it takes forever. So I just edited that out. And I don't, from here, I don't remember what I necessarily do first. I, I'm not sure if I go after the card first or do I, or I go straight for, or I just go straight for the, just the iron or for the giant first. I don't really remember. Oh, I guess I go for. I guess I'm heading. I guess I had. It's, it's been a while. It's been some time since I did this recording, so I my memory isn't as clear or coherent as what I did. But either way, I was just like, okay, we're going to avoid lightning throwing snake woman, and I find out that Balder Knight does not actually go at you immediately, because usually I fight him regardless. So that was kind of interesting, but I just continue on. It's like, rather not anger the locals as much as I can, avoid angering the locals. So I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to move onwards. We're going to go deal with, we're going to deal with Billy the... Firebomb throwing giant and maybe go deal with a with a fire giant with the iron golem. Sorry. And of course the best the best strategy with dealing with the giant up here, just kind of go just walk in and out through the doorway and just goad him into doing his tantrum and then wait for him at the bottom of the stairs till he's done and just attack him till he's dead. It's really the best way. Saves you a lot of frustration and a lot of deaths easily. As well as you want to kind of hang down like sort of a few steps down because he's, his arms are able to clip through that wall which is rather cheap, which is kind of cheap and kind of annoying. But, oh well. Yeah, so, he, so pretty much this is just where he throws his tantrum. I just wait patiently for him to come down. It's like, okay. I think also I try to see how much damage I'm doing to him, which if you can sort of see, it's I'm pretty much doing about 600 damage to him per swing, and then a jump attack is nearly like 300, like 830. So I was like, okay, let's see what the actual attack does, my two-hand attack, which is almost 800. Hmm. So, free Tiny Knight Chung, which is always nice for us, because we'll be needing that anyway for the Partisan Spear. If I can finally upgrade that spear. I, and just a little bit of inventory management because I was just like, yeah, what do, what do I got? I still have some things. I'll use this on the boss just for some laughs. Maybe see if I can actually flip. Because I try to... Because usually with the Iron Golem, I've been trying to flip him for so long. And... Nah, welcome to the Iron... So welcome back to the Iron Golem, actually. Um, New Game Plus wise, he has not changed at all. Honestly... The bosses do not change at all from the new game from new games to new game pluses. They're about the same, they just have more health and hit a bit harder, but as for me, it's just I will assault your knees. I I try so very hard to flip this guy, because I've I've wanted to so much and I've had so many close hits and this is where I was like, I got excited here because it's like, oh god, oh god, I can flip him! And then he falls to the side, not near the edge at all. I was so I got so upset by this and it's like, ah, but I believe pretty soon I have probably one of the probably one of the coolest kills that I actually slowed down for you guys to see the, kill, the final moment in which it's like sort of this neat little flash basically, and also a random dead angle as well. And I find out that I'm actually not. Also, I can I'm not invincible. I find I found out and. I think it was this exact same moment I actually I actually had the last second when I healed, which is kind of cool. And here we go! Probably minor to everyone else, but to me I thought it was kind of cool that I pretty much killed him in a literal cross counter. He, <laughs> our weapons hit the ground nearly at the same time, except for maybe like a few frames. But I was just like, yeah, we've killed the golem. I'm going to use my souls, going to level up a few bits. I believe I love. I think I level up my strength a bit more as a, as usual, just because. And oh, <laughs> okay. So we're over here now. We, I pretty much. I guess I got rid of all the things I did and made it over here because I was figuring I might as well try to go for the shortcut key and suddenly was killed in a combination with that snake woman, which I try again. It's like okay. 
So she knocked me out in combination while I was in midair, so I decided to take her discretion, or distraction, the fact that she was looking the other way, made the jump in time to actually kill her. Also, yes, the crossbow man is actually sniping me from over here. I was kind of impressed by that. Because I didn't think you, because I thought it was impossible for him to actually see you at that, at that range. But I didn't and I think I also used the last of my souls pretty much to get some more Titanite shards out of them. So, oh, I do. Okay. So that'll pr that those will pretty much get my get the spear to plus ten. So hooray! That will be only. So I pretty much just will be needing chunks for the left and Go along, Don't mind the something. don't mind the arrows at all. Just just don't mind those. There's reasons I have those that will be explained later on, much much later. A very certain infamous boss that everyone probably like uses the strategy, which is understandable because he's a terrible boss. Either way, we go. Let's go in. Oh, I guess I don't go for the key immediately. I guess I just won the shards and I go straight for Ricard. Apparently, okay. Also, that Bolden Knight is still attempting to snipe me. I think he pretty much is. He pretty much can't hit you range. And very neat knight and very neat knight actually. Yeah. I don't know why, but that I literally love I love that move with the Demon Great Machete. It's practically useless because it's so slow, but it's so entertaining when you can hit when you can hit someone with that move, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. So Ricardo pretty much is infamous for being bows and having his what his in his rapier for just kinda killing you if you get hit by his move. Here's about here's in three seconds how here's in a few seconds how you can pretty much just make him null and void. Iron flesh for the win. He can't do anything to you. And I think at some point I actually hit sort of like a attack of opportunity just because of the fact that his weapon bounced off me. This is kind of the best thing about iron flesh. Basically, you are a living juggernaut with that on. Nothing like your I think your poise goes like stupidly high as well as your defense. I'm not necessarily sure on the poise part, but your defense pretty much goes like off the roofs and anything that pretty much hits you will kind of just like not will pretty much like kind of bounce off you. So you can set you can kind of stun a lot of people with that move, which is very good, which is very useful. The only d real downside to Iron Flesh is you just are pretty much as slow as rocks and yeah. So I <laughs> okay, so I'm back here. I'm and I sped up all the, all the stairs because they're just so long and I was just like no. And also, there are two black phantoms down here with the normal snake woman for the key. So I guess I went back for the shortcut. Also, I thought I could be clever in trying to lure them in with a sound, but they didn't really go for that. So I decided, let's lure them up the stairs. Maybe I can do some. Maybe there's some shenanigans I can do that could possibly kill them. Like I was hoping maybe I could. And actually, now that I remember. Okay. I get hit once because I made a simple mistake and attacked my own camera, but this is, I think, where I find out that not only the snake men are kind of thick involving ledges, but jump attacks are your best friend about against dealing the Black Phantom counterparts, I think. So I end up just abusing jump attacks regardless on these guys. Especially since you can hit two of them at once. It's rather nice. Of course, I do panic slightly when I get hit, but let's see the Nero there. So just a few more jump, jump attacks, probably not, or just one more hit, and he's dead. Make our way down since thankfully we're not that we weren't that far up, and we go kill the snake woman. Grab ourselves a key for a shortcut, which I think the way up I sped up just as I did with the way down, just because again those stairs are kind of long, and I was just like I don't want to show how tedious they are, so I'll speed. I think they're sped up like I sped the footage up like four times or so, like times four or something like that I don't really remember but here we go it's kind of a fun little I love how like quick footage you sound like also I also we get we kill the merchant because I have no need for green shards nor the large shards anymore so it's just like yeah I'll kill you for your souls and I think also my main reason is I thought I was going for he could drop some humanity I don't remember if he does also, expert parry. Um, 
Let's see. Let me see. Yeah, he dropped he dropped absolutely no humanity, which kind of made me sus. Like, oh, I feel I felt bad for killing him because like he had my whole reason of killing him, and here I kind of demonstrated the whole attempt to roll with Iron Flesh. He just kind of he kind of headbang a bit, which was to me kind of funny. And also briefly, I, I guess I come I come down here, grab the sniper crossbow and a chest down here, and I hold and I pretty much just show up the just show what the items do, just so you guys can read them. It's like here you go, this sniper crossbow item from pretty much used by soldiers of Kareem or snipers. Really. And so, for, actually, and one thing I've sort of noticed now, and I probably have noticed it before in my through the times I played Dark Souls, but have never really mentioned it, but. Every time there's a Boulder Knight, there's usually a very, there's usually a very neat knight with every Boulder Knight you see. Like in the parish, there's the Boulder Knights and just a like a bunch of Boulder Knights as well. And here's the Stone Plate Ring, basically, which is a nice ring to have for fire. We keep that in mind. And over here, I go back and deal with a with the Rapier Knight because screw him. I think I go open the shortcut as well. And but before we open that, I guess I went down here to see just if just in case there's any other goodies because I don't travel down there a, a whole whole lot just because you know there's usually no there's no point in my mind because I just killed him and just ran away and then found there were no goodies so I was like oh okay moving on so so we just open the shortcut and I think we make our way to we make our way over to Anolando which is about the end of this episode, which is where this end this ends actually. We I pretty much kinda ended off very soon afterwards, so yeah. Also I get in time to see a snake man just get hit by the guillotine, which got a broad chuckle to me, honestly. I was like, yeah, <laughs> idiot. How oh, nice. Also there is a way you can get that elevator go down without going in it if you move out fast, but I wasn't able to, so that was the reason why I wrote I had to write it down. But it was no problem. So, yeah, this was the real. This is pretty much the real Sin's House of Fun, really. Also, there's a friend from Steam kind of saying, "Hey, I'm playing something. I need to figure out how to turn that off, honestly, because that gets a bit irritating in recording." But either way, this is the post. -com this is post commentary with Genesis Zero Thirteen in Dark Souls: The Silent Hill Run. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and. You know, just let me know what you guys think with this and the next video when I up when I upload that. Just let me know what you guys think of the post commentary and if you like it or should I just stay with live or should I mix it up? Just just let me know. But until then, I have been Genesis Zero Third. This has been Dark Souls. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And well, I will leave you guys to this cutscene.